Hello, friends. You have voted. We were going to call this Kenny, but I think now we're going to call it LS10. R. I'm putting my R in there. The R goes. What is going on, guys? I am Watch Jergo, and today, of course, we are here with my 2000 Chevy S10 Extreme that we are now gonna call the LS10. We, I put a poll on the community tab, an overwhelming number of you guys voted in the comments that LS Extreme was the winner, but LS10 was the real winner. So I really wanted to call it Kenny so we could be like, they killed Kenner. But uh, I, I think we're gonna go with the LS10 R because that's actually pretty good. So I'm going with your suggestions. And today we're gonna try to make a little progress on this. It's basically gonna be a frame off restoration because I want it to be nice when we're working on it. That's the most critical part of every car. I don't care that it looks nice or anything like that. I just don't want trash falling in my eyes when I'm underneath the thing working on it on the side of the road or something like that. So that is why we're gonna try to kind of fully restore the S10 Extreme. Now there's been a lot of hate comments where you guys are saying that this should have been crushed, which I'd like to respond to with every time I've crushed a car, even if it's been literally obliterated with holes all the way through it, people have thrown an absolute fit. I, I have gotten burned at the stake many times for crushing cars. And yes, this was at that point, but also the S10 Extreme is one of the most important small trucks that's ever been built in the history of ever. I think this is the coolest sport truck. As far as sport trucks go, it's pretty much the second gen Ford Lightning. Of course, the old setup, the Cyclone Typhoon setup, they, those were pretty cool, but I don't really enjoy uh, driving those. They look really cool. This looks really, really cool. And with the perfect drivetrain NLS, which is the only real option, it's the perfect truck. So that is why we are building this truck and that is why we are obviously not gonna stop. We're just gonna power right on through all the hate and build a really cool kind of pro touring, pro street truck. And when you're done, when we're done, you guys will understand why we did it. I know most of you are already completely in on this build because it's something that most S10 people wanna see. There's a lot of first gen S10 LS swaps. There's not that many second gens. And this looks like 150,000 times better than the first gen. I don't like the boxy first gen. That's my opinion, obviously. I like this one is beautiful. It has the perfect curves. GM knocked it out of the park. And I mean, it's just the truck. It's the truck I've always wanted. And I would have loved to have just swapped another V6 in and kept right on going. But this truck was way too far gone to try to bring back to life like that. So instead, frame off restoration, full paint. Uh, we'll put it on welds. We'll build a drag pack for it or some kind of really sick racing wheel. Uh, we're going to restore the ZQ8s as well or buy new ones. The, these wheels, which are only on this and the Blazer, very rare and one of the coolest looking wheels. I mean, just, this, just is perfect. I love it to death. Anyway, let's get started. Today, the truck kept going flat like every 30 minutes because one of the valve stems was just absolutely gone and the tires were obviously shot from sitting for 13 plus years. And these are the tires that were on it. Um, just for my notes, I think they're 235, 6016s. So we're gonna end up going to a Nitto that's a 24550, which is about the same tire. It looks meaty, it has the perfect profile for driving around on the street. But these tires were free from a friend of mine and we just tossed them on it real quick with new valve stems so that we can move this truck around without it going flat every single day. Also, it's uh, for our stance build. This is, look at that, we've got stretch tires. We've joined the stance community. <laughs> One, go! <laughs> hey, it works, so. hey! Goodbye, old S10 tires. <laughs> so to get these things off, it was pretty funny. I should have shot some video of it, but we were in we were in a hurry. Front tire came off, no problem. Pulled the lugs off. Back tire, I sat there and kicked it for like five minutes as hard as I could. And Chris was like, "You're about to kick the truck off the jack stands." I was like, "Oh." So we switched it up. We came over here, we grabbed this block of wood and the biggest sledgehammer I have, and we started swinging at the wheel as hard as we possibly could. And we did that for, I don't know, five minutes with two different people. You can see all the trash that fell out of it there. And the wheel still would not come off of the brake drum here. Just swinging and swinging. So after all three of us had taken a turn on the sledgehammer, we, we had just given up all hope. So I grabbed the knocker loose and I soaked it. I sprayed it in the lug holes. I sprayed it around the hub. And then I took the torch and I started heating up the aluminum wheel, somehow didn't burn the finish off it. 
and just sat there and heated it up and heated it up and then one good whack with the sledgehammer and she fell right off. But that was an absolute ordeal. Luckily now we can move the S10 to work on it. So next steps, we're gonna empty this thing out. We're gonna empty the bed out. We're gonna pull the bed off. Then we're gonna pull the cab off next. And maybe today we just get the bed off. I'll show you how to do that for real if you've never pulled a bed. Typically easy, the fuel fill is the hard part and the wiring. And we're gonna take this thing all the way down to the frame, do a quick sandblast out in the parking lot and paint it black. And this will be a very clean starting point for our pro truck build. And once it's all back together, this will go to paint and it's gonna look flawless again. We're not spending too much money. We're doing all of this with sweat equity, but it's gonna be nice. That's really the goal here. Well, from here, it looks like we've got ourselves a gasser. It sits perfectly in the back. It's like seven inches taller in the front. We've got wheel cap for days, but it's super nice to have tires that work. I mean, it's just the little things like tires are huge improvements. <laughs> Eric's trying to clean up the uh, old window weld again, the old uh, urethane adhesive there. Kind of cleaning it all up, even though the windshield guy is obviously going to finish all that. But the bed is now empty and we are ready to start pulling it off. So there should be some fasteners in here. Came with a free tire gauge. What a weird tire gauge. That is an odd tire gauge. It doesn't have any angle to it. Usually these beds have bolts on this side, but I don't see a single bolt in here. So I think we're just gonna have to pull all this from underneath. Uh, the few things we need to tackle will be the taillights. Gotta get the wiring out of those and the fuel <laughs> trying door. To, trying to open the tailgate might be a... Oh yeah, the tailgate doesn't open. We're gonna go ahead and roll the truck forward so we can get underneath this thing and then lift up the rear end. Listen to that drum shaft. What a, what a nice sound. That's how you know it's showroom. Quality. All right, that's good. That's good. Cool. We might have to pull the drive shaft one of these times. It's just under there flopping around like that. All right, time to creep in. Here we go, underneath the truck. So the spare tire is missing. Oh yeah, these bed bolts look super easy. They're just kind of hiding up in the corners of the frame rails right there. There's some knocker loose if well, you want. Oh yeah, we should soak these with some knocker loose. Probably dirt, they're full of dirt. Smart, oh look at the exhaust. This thing had a custom exhaust right there. Cut off right in front of the axle. Is it dumped on the axle? It's dumped right on the axle. Oh, yeah. just got a big... No, <laughs> oh, it's just saws on off. But it's after the mufflers, it probably sounded all right. The sway bar end links have to go. Uh, the rear is gonna need some help. The air shocks are definitely gone, gone, gone. We Sh hope this is pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man himself lives up under this truck. I'm taking the hit. I'm just gonna close my eyes even with the safety glasses on. Got one. See if we can make it a, a twofer. Oh! <laughs> we don't need those when we're going. Oh yeah, we're not gonna put those back. No way. I wish we had a shower here already because I'm getting wrecked. Right, look at this. We're gonna do a flatbed like a farm truck. Now, what's a farm S10? Pretty sure the farm truck has a bed on it, but yeah, sure. No, like a real farm truck. Nah, dog. Obviously, it's going to be a welding truck, so we're going to break stuff all the time. Wait, it does need its own onboard welder. <laughs> yeah. Put it back together. I don't know what you're waiting on. Oh, yeah. yeah. The C10s definitely. We did the C10, and that, it was they're all through the bed. Oh, oh, yeah. Most trucks are through the bed. This is actually kind of weird. But you still have to get under them, so you got not back them up, so either way. Dumb. Dumb that they would do that. All right, watch out. I'm hitting it. So is that eight total? Yeah, I think there's eight. And then we still have to get in here somehow and get the uh, fuel neck out. Fuel neck and the rear wire. Pull the jack stands out for being a rapid pump jack. It's just not rapid enough, you know? Ooh. Rapid. We need that yeah, we need that suspension. Alright, we 
we got her. What do we have to do to make it to where, like, when we have to get in the bed, we can just have the, you know, you know the ones where the bed just comes straight yeah, up yeah, and yeah. Can work What on. we need is that, uh, the ATV bed, where the bed lifts up and goes back onto the ground. <laughs> is, that, is that a rollback? And then well, the whole thing is just so we can change fuel pumps when we need to. All right, let's try this. Here we go. Time to pull I mean, every wire is disconnected. Every line. Let me pick up, let me pick up my side and then let me yeah, know if go anything's for it. catching. Go for it. Oh, one uh, Christmas tree is holding it down. One Christmas tree held it down. Okay, this time uh, I think the trailer wire harness was going to be able to pick it up so you can see. All right. Try number two. Going for the four more percent. That can't happen. The problem is that lifting it, it's lifting it that high fell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got it! Yeah. The bed is off! That is so much work for two people. I was hoping the detailers would stay long enough to help us. <laughs> oh. We have died. Died from dysentery. We got the bed off, which was, uh, that's a lot of work for two people trying to lift straight up on these modern beds. But we got it did, and uh, of course, there's like pins right there that are what locate the bed, and then the rest of it was all pretty relatively easy. Now we've exposed the next steps. What's crazy is dual U-joint yoke on that drive shaft. Mm -hmm. That's pretty wild. Uh, exhaust is coming off. We got a new fuel pump already to put in that tank. I think we'll just run that tank for now. Uh, EVAP can get deleted. All this has to be cleaned up. We're probably gonna sandblast the whole chassis and then the RR15 or run the Eastwood chassis coating. So, let's see what we gotta do to get this cab off. I think the front fenders have to come off first and then we can put a strap through the cab and lift it straight up with the forklift. Yeah, I think it's only six bolts. Yeah, I think so Once too. the fenders come on. Yeah, so the key here is the front yeah. fenders and all this wiring. That looks cool, man. I love it. Only took a few minutes and we got the front fenders off, the fender liners off this side. Now this fender liner, the driver's side one, is a lot more work because of the fuse box, which uh, is free, honestly. I think I have it on free. Oop, there goes the battery thing. <laughs> so you can just pull this out and it's off. Uh, oh, look at that. We're, we actually have it off. The fender liner is off. We were just playing games with y'all. So uh, after we move all the wiring harnesses out of the way here, we will be ready to pull that fender liner. And then I think all that's really left is the steering linkage and uh, all the wires that go into the cab. We can just kind of flip into the cab through the windshield and probably lift the cab off. I don't know if we're actually going to do that today, but we might be able to pull the cab that quickly. So this thing will be all the way down to the frame and that's where we're going with it. One bolt left, 113 in there. Yeah, it was, you know, blending in with the rest. I gotcha. Since we were in here already, the ABS pump is gone because we're not going to run it with ABS. Um, there's just no call for this old school ABS inside this truck. And there's quite a bit of brake mess, but the, you know, the pump's gone, fuse blocks out of the way, fender liner's gone. Yep, I think we're ready to pull the cab. Just a few things that need wrapped up still. I gotta pull uh, the body connector out of the fuse block and that's it. Unfortunately, we just ran into a huge roadblock. I went over to the other side to grab the forklift and there's like three cars lined oh, up yeah. in the way. <laughs> I was like, oh, we can't move it. These sevens? Uh, yes, I do think those are sevens. <laughs> they might be sixes, but you only have to take out one of them. The one that goes to the uh, back of the chassis. Yeah, the, the big boy. Yeah. The detail side is wild right now. The uh, Tiger is getting its PPF put on, new rocker PPF, and of course, like we said, the hood and front end and all that stuff. Uh, this brand new Denali, is getting fully corrected and it's beautiful, beautiful black. This just came back from a body shop and they're fixing the body shop work. And then this beautiful Chevelle is over here as well with a big block in it and they're knocking the oxidation off it and ceramic coating this for the owner because he doesn't want to take the original paint off. So it's just getting a kind of a quick cleanup. 
And of course the forklift is behind all of this. There you have it, the cab is disconnected and we are ready to lift it off tomorrow. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to get to the equipment we need until then. But bed's off, front fenders are off, fender liner's off, everything, all the wiring's pulled, the needs pulled, and tomorrow we should be able to roll an empty chassis outside for the first time and start ripping the last few things apart. Now, we're probably gonna put a rear end in it. I wanted to keep it, but I think we're gonna have to start with a rear end. We will see. Uh, it just seems like that's gonna break fast. And we're gonna go from there. Oh, while we're at it, there's a few boxes here, and these boxes have the things you need to LS swap your S10. So here is the Hooker Blackheart uh, AC evaporator enclosure. This is the new one that's much smaller. So this has like a completely different profile and it lets you fit all of your LS stuff back in there without rubbing. And the Hooker Blackheart steering shaft is coming as well. It eliminates that rag joint that always goes bad on these things right there. It's a uh, kind of a bunch of cloth stacked up and those always fail. They're there to provide isolation, but they end up creating slop. Here we have the Hooker Blackheart S10 engine mounts, injectors. Um, this is the fuel pump right there, and those are the new fuel rails right there. The new fuel pump should just drop right into the tank. It's completely factory style. Uh, they sell this as a kit. Uh, the fuel pump's a little extra, but they sell a kit to swap this thing for 750 bucks. It has the mounts, the AC box. Ooh, what's that spider? It's got a red spot on its back. Uh, look underneath the harness. It's up. It's probably going down the firewall right now. That's fine. We need a glove and we can smash it. Oh, well, there it is. That's not a black one. That's a Charlie spider. Take it out. No, that's Charles, dude. <laughs> he watches this truck. Before we got interrupted by that spider crawling across the truck, like I said, Holly has complete swaps. Uh, you can just pick the level of kit that you need to do this. So your kit can kind of go up and include headers or long tubes or whatever you want and uh, just bolt this thing together, which is really, really cool. We are going way, way farther than just bolting it together. I know I wanted to put it right back on the road, but I also don't want to be working on the truck and have spiders coming out, you know, seven months down the road. So we'll be completely clean, paint the frame, then put all this back together with new bushings on everything, go from there. Yep. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjr.com where you can get cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. I'd say we got a lot done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go pick up the windshield and put it out by myself. You just, uh, you could probably kick the windshield in just like kicked it out. I don't get know if that works. <laughs> Super glue. It's probably like $65 windshield, so I'll give it a whirl. <laughs> it is a cheap windshield. Should be. We have a spare over there, you can use that <laughs> one. How close do you think it is? Not close. <laughs> it looks like way too much. Dirt. It's a totally different car.